Hey everybody, welcome to Ask Dr. Testosterone, starring Dr. George Juliados, the only weekly show on YouTube where you can ask questions from a medical doctor who is also a champion bodybuilder. It's brought to you by his amazing book, The Bible of Bodybuilding 2, over 700 pages full of everything you need to know about training, nutrition, supplementation, and PEDs. You can get that on Amazon.com. While you're on Amazon, you can also get my book. It's called Real Bodybuilding. And now all the way from Athens, Greece, please welcome Dr. George Antuliados. How are you, George? Hello, Ron. What's going on now with the bodybuilding life? Well, uh, I actually, before we get into the viewer questions, I have a question for you because yeah. I was just training legs with my wife and I came up with the, out of a rep on squats and I tore something on the outside of my good leg. Oh my God, listen, you don't need more heavy squats. Come on, I just do only one plate. So here's my question. I looked up what drugs they weaken tendons can lead to tendon ruptures. Statins and aromatase inhibitors, both. Aromatase inhibitors, yes. And I'm on both of them. So should I stop taking them? Well, AIs, I mean, recently Thomas released a video that said you shouldn't block estrogens because they're beneficial, hmm. especially when you're not symptomatic. You told me you're not symptomatic, right? No, no, not at all. Since you're not symptomatic, let the estrogens work for the good effects of them, including the joints. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now, it could be irrelevant to that because you're 50 plus. 54. Almost, yeah, almost if, yeah, in the mid 50s. And your collagen synthesis is going down, even though, of course, yeah, you, you're using some GHs, but there is a tolerance and there is a threshold to that. Okay. So if I were you, I wouldn't squat 220. I would squat, I mean, one plate only and do it more reps and uh, slower centric, you know, the drill. You don't need to push yourself. Besides, you have the, the lumbar hernia, you know? I do yeah. have a hernia, yeah. I have a hernia too. So that's my estradiol. I think my estradiol is only a 64 right now. It's fine, it's fine because your testosterone is above 1,000. Come on, it's fine. Oh, that's high? I didn't think that was high. <laughs> oh, oh, I guess anything over 42.6 is considered high. Okay. And okay. yeah, you're right. The testosterone, uh, they wouldn't even they wouldn't even tell me what it was. It was higher than 1,550. So, oh, well, it's out of range. I feel fine. I feel good. Uh, just in case you're wondering, all the other stuff's good. My cholesterol, good. HDL is a little low. Still so need to increase it, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, but my, my cholesterol is fine. My triglycerides are fine. Now, the the liver is because of the trading and the statin, okay? Mm. Creatinine, how much do you have creatinine? Uh, do they test my creatinine? Hmm. Yeah, for how Let's see, bun, creatinine ratio. Oh, creatinine, there we go. It's in good range. It's 1.15. Yeah. It's not bad. Bun is good. EGFR is good. Bun creatinine ratio. Hemoglobin? Oh. Uh, where was that? Globulin, albumin, bilirubin. Oh, okay, Mr. Hemoglobin is a CBC, is another test, is another paper. Oh, yeah. Do I have that? Uh, I think I'm pretty. Uh, see. Hematocrit. Here we go. Hemoglobin and hematocrit and red blood cells. Now you can go for the donation now. A little high. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nation, yeah, but well, actually, you're gonna be phlebotomized because it's over 18, so go for it and uh, use a baby aspirin. Okay, fair enough. But, um, the statins maybe I think I'm gonna to talk to my I'm gonna to talk to my uh, cardiologist about getting off the statins because I now I, listen, listen, uh, it's not a good idea because you're using the deck and you have already a calcium score positive, true, true. But, uh, you know, you know, guy's sister Nino, the 212 bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. He's torn his quads three times and he thinks it's because of statins because it's all happened. Uh, he needs to take statins. He, he's abusing steroids. Come on. Well, he was. Yeah. Okay. All okay. right. I'll stay on the stuff for now. Okay. <laughs> all right, Doc. Let's get into the viewer questions now that uh, I've, I've brought my concerns to the table. Mm -hmm. This is our lead question for the week. What age is good to start GH, growth hormone for anti aging? Also, my father had colon carcinoma 15 years ago and was operated, uh, been fine. So he wants to know, do I need to test for tumor markers 
which ones, if I decide to use GH for in, uh, anti-aging, doesn't plan on taking more than two units. Yeah, so you need three and a half. Now, over 50, I guess, is a good age because okay. you're after 50, you're middle of your life. Uh, and um, around the tumor markets, including, apart from the PSA, the CA 19.9, which is the colonic cancer and the viscera and the liver and the pancreas. Yeah. The CA, um, the CEA, which is the major, the main, actually, tumor marker. Okay. Uh, these are the, the two, uh, and plus the PSA for men. And women have another two for breast and ovary. And certainly do not abuse sugar. Now, um, check out your A1C also. It needs to be below 5.5, close to 5, to have good insulin sensitivity. All right, and of course, don't smoke and don't drink because smoking induces uh, respiratory cancer and alcohol um, liver cancer. So stay out of those risky factors. GH doesn't cause cancer, but it can fire up an already existing cancer, okay? Yeah, I mean, that's what, you know, Dennis Newman, the bodybuilder back in the 90s, Yeah, he, uh, he got leukemia, yeah. Yeah, leukemia. Become pro, and he felt it was because of the growth hormone that it sped up the process and he would have got it later in life instead of, he was like 26, 25 years old, 26. Yeah, hopefully he was cured. Huh? Yeah. So All right, we got a training question. We like those. My left shoulder looks way better than my right shoulder. Seems they develop completely differently. Even when I train both with the same exercises, military press, side lateral raise, upright rows, face rows, the same weight. Is that possible? Yeah. Check out if you have some nerve damage. Okay, so do an MRI, cervical MRI, to see if you have the brachial plexus that is spread out to the arm, some kind of neuropathy, okay? And go to, um, not not the physical therapist, uh, we call them, um, um, there's a specialty that deals with orthopedics, neurology, and pathology, um, and they put you some electric current and see how, how you react your muscles and the nerves okay yeah um so go for it and check out if you have some nerve damage because ronnie coleman and uh, big rami had this kind of neurotic and damage and they hit the lats you know yeah. and one latch was smaller than the other and the same goes for the triceps here that is nerved by the radial nerve okay anyway do an mri I think, you know, some asymmetry difference between sides is kind of normal. I mean, are both, are both of your arms and legs the same from left to right? Arms, I think. This same is my, side? My right, it looks better, you know. Uh, I think that one looks better. Your left one. Right. <laughs> Even though I'm, I'm left-handed, I yeah. think that my right has better uh, peak, you know. I don't know. You know, Arthur Jones, Did you? were you the one that sent me that? About Arthur Jones saying that, if like, if you're right-handed – your left arm has to work harder. Like I'm right-handed, my left arm has always been bigger and better than my right because I think it, yeah, I'm southpaw. So yeah, so you're yeah. right. Okay, all right. So here's a question that keeps coming up. It's Monica. She keeps asking this question: Does the body absorb subcutaneous injections the same way as good as intramuscular? It does not because it slows down and fat has much less blood supply than the muscle, which is full of blood vessels. Mm. Okay. Besides, when we pin into the fat, we don't have blood coming out of it like here, you know? Mm. So uh, is, it, is the body absorbing the same amount of the drug, just at a slower rate? But at a slower rate, yeah. Okay, so you're not losing any, either way, you're not losing any of the drug, really. No, the same goes for GH. Come on, you, you're injecting GH in uh, HG subcutaneously doesn't mean it doesn't work, okay? True. Same goes for insulin also. Right. Yeah, it's lower rate. Okay. There's a good one. A lot of us are using minoxidil. I use it every day now. Can topical minoxidil with 0.1 dutasteride used daily affect testosterone serum level in otherwise healthy 50-year-old males? Yes, they actually increase testosterone by the lower DHT. Oh. That's the main thing. I was having a discussion with Milos. And people who are using the testosterone and finasteride, surprisingly, they have higher testosterone but lower DHT. DHT causes a low sex drive, 
uh, right. and the moodiness, you know, the depression. So there are different um, substances. DHT is way more androgenic, and it causes depression and lack of libido when you don't have this. And uh, um, I mean, if you want to increase your sex drive, you need to take some provider, which is DHT, okay? Now, the testosterone will convert to DHT, but taking DHT itself is a real deal for that. Yeah, I just, proviron is notoriously bad for your hair, though. So yeah. you want to stay away from it if you got male pattern baldness going on there. All right, next one is, I noticed my body doesn't respond to the same steroids, AAS, in the second time I use it. Usually I double the dose, but there that's very harmful, obviously. Are there any other methods to force the body to respond again to the same AAS without doubling the doses? Yes, yeah, stay out of storage for more time in order to clear your receptors. Mm. All right. Yeah, because you know, we've you've talked many times about people changing the compounds because if you're on like a 16-week cycle, it's the same same two or three compounds the whole time. You reach a certain uh, uh, plateau where you're not going to make any more gains. But if you change the compounds every few weeks, it sort of trick seems to trick the body into getting re continuous results. So, but time off, you know, a lot of people don't want to take any time off anymore. That's a problem. You might lose your gains. Anyway, <laughs> we've got one final question. Does low dose prescribed replacement HGH, human growth hormone, raise glucose, or is that just bodybuilders who abuse? HGH, and can it help neck pain in six months to a year? Oh, uh, listen, GAs may induce, under abuse, of course, um, more gluconeogenesis and glycemia that leads to insulin resistance. But in the long run, GAs burns the visceral fat, so it improves insulin sensitivity. Oh, okay. Hmm. All right. The point is, the problem is when you abuse already GAs and you eat a lot of ice creams and cakes and stuff like that, then the, your A1C goes up, okay? But if you use a small amount of GHs, you avoid first glycemia, and then in the long run, you burn visceral fat, and your A1C goes down. Uh, I've never heard about GH helping any kind of pain, neck, especially neck pain. Have you? Listen, I'm using GHs right. uh, straight years now. I mean, uh, since 2020, I'm using on a daily basis, and since 2017, I was using one pen per um, per month. I can tell you, I can uh, verify you that I'm still having some uh, pain here in my triceps, in my where it's inserted. You know, even though I'm using daily 20 or 30 grams of collagen along with hyaluronic acid stacked, I'm using all the stuff. Okay, I'm, I'm not using BPC or TB500. Yeah, but I've been using GH and collagen and hyaluronic acid all year round, and uh, I have also nasty pain over here when I wake up because of my partial rupture in my supraspinatus, mm. and my rotator cuff also is damaged. Mm. Okay, but I don't know how it would be if I never used GH. Mm. So perhaps mm. the condition is not getting worse because of the GH use, but I have. I can certify you that when I broke my back and and uh, I was operated, I speed up the healing process because of the GHs and the DEC and the testosterone all together for uh, one month after, you know, and I was able to train, you know, uh, step by step. And uh, now I look better than before the operation. I, I'm not sold on the BPC-157. I used it every day for six months after my quad tear i can't say it healed anything faster i really don't know and there's turns out there's no there's not one human study it's only rat studies so mouse studies. GH, right yeah i've been on gh so the gh was helping for sure plus the deca yeah the deca so those two things gh and deca. more effective to muscle rather than the tendon gh is more specified to tendon rather than the muscle because gh does is make synthesis of collagen is the hormone of elasticity makes arteries more elastic, <clears throat> but DECA makes muscles stronger, but <clears throat> the cables don't follow, which are the tendons, and then you have the ruptures. It makes tendons sometimes more stiff. Hmm. Yeah, <clears throat> that's that's the problem is tendons, guys. 
when they say muscle tear, you're not really tearing a muscle. Usually, you're usually tearing the tendon that attaches the muscle to the bone. That's why it's a quadriceps tendon rupture, a triceps tendon rupture. It's a tendon tearing. Oof. Anyway, uh, that is all our questions for this week. Uh, it's very late over there. It's very hot over there. So appreciate you doing this, taking the time. Guys, we're very, very lucky every week to have the good doctor answering your questions. So please support the show. Go to Amazon.com and get this book, The Bible of Bodybuilding 2, revised edition. Tons of pictures, quizzes, 700 plus pages, all kinds of great stuff in there. Of course, if you like these videos, please subscribe, like, share them on your platforms, ring that notification bell, do all that good stuff. Dr. T, thank you so much for another great show this week. I uh, appreciate you taking the time on the weekends like you do this. And that's it. So thanks, everybody, for watching Ask Dr. Testosterone with Dr. George Antuliados. We'll see you right here next time. Thanks for watching.